Hi. In the previous videos, I showed you how to make a very simple thermoacoustic engine. Uh, it is made of a can, a piece of aluminium, and some steel wool. And on top of it, we put rice. Later on, I showed you that we can replace the rice with some uh, better material, for example, glass beads. And we have uh, tested the engine, and the engine worked really nicely. During the past uh, days, I decided to work on the engine a bit more to improve the performance of the engine. First uh, thing that I noticed is that uh, in the original design, we had only one can. So when we apply heat to the lower part of the engine, after a short time, maybe several minutes, maybe five minutes or more, eventually the top part of the engine will get very hot. And because we have a balloon on top of the engine that works as a piston, because of high temperature, eventually this balloon will go uh, bad and maybe it, uh, it opens. Uh, of course, we can cool down the top part of the engine, for example, by water or force air, but that one is, uh, is a bit difficult to make. So I decided to change the structure of the engine a bit so that it can last for longer time. Therefore, I made a taller engine like this. I took some cans and I soldered them together to make it a bit taller. And uh, here is the last stage where the balloon is uh, mounted. Internal part of the engine is the same as before. We have an aluminum piece and uh, steel wool, and on top of that, glass beads. Then I decided to check the impact of different parameters on the performance of the engine, so to optimize uh, its performance. So the first parameter was the length of this aluminum piece. So I made uh, different length of aluminum pieces, and now that the engine is taller, I could uh, easily investigate uh, the impact of all of them. However, I tried a lot, spent many hours, uh, but the results that I got was not very conclusive. Sometimes the engine worked really nice, sometimes it did not work at all. Um, sometimes the taller aluminum uh, piece was better, sometimes the shorter, so I could not conclude anything. Um, Later on, I figured out the reason, and this is the reason that I'm going to tell you. Um, from the original design, I put a hole in the lower part of the engine so that I can inject water into the engine, and basically water vapor will be created into the structure, and uh, it increases the heat transfer so the engine performs better. When the engine was short, as soon as I injected the water, the vapor could fill um, a lot of area of the engine, so the engine could perform. But for this taller engine, uh, when I injected the water, so the vapor starts in the lower section and immediately the pressure increases, so the balloon starts to swell. And in order to avoid the balloon burst, I had to remove uh, the syringes so that extra pressure comes out of this hole. Uh, but in that case, actually all the vapor that is created will go out from this. So the engine could not be filled with the water vapor. Therefore, when I did all the experiments to see the impact of the length of the aluminum, uh, I could not get any nice result. Because sometimes maybe the vapor was more in the engine, sometimes was less, so it, it, I could not compare the results with each other. In order to solve this issue, then I eventually came to conclusion that I should add another hole on top of the engine. So when I inject the water, okay, the vapor is created, the pressure increased, but the excess pressure will come out from the top of the engine. And this guarantees that the engine will have the vapor inside it. However, at this point, I discovered something fantastic, which really it was uh, to be patented, but I'm not going to patent it, I'm going to tell you. And that is with this structure, so that we inject water from the lower part and we have a very tiny hole on the top part so that the excess uh, pressure comes out, the engine becomes a self-starting engine. So I don't need to touch the piston in order to start the engine. The engine starts from a small oscillation and eventually it uh, operates at full um, power. So this is what I'm going to show you in this video and hope you will like it. All right, so now I'm going to turn on the engine. The hole here is open. I also put these two uh, cans here filled with water because the induction cooker needs to have some metal on top of it to be able to turn on. 
it will detect whether there is something on top of it or not. If I only use this one, it does not have enough metal, enough surface, so it detects that there is nothing on it. But when I put these things, then it thinks that there is a pot, it turns on. Okay, so let me, I turn it on. Because this is open, so you notice that the extra pressure came out. So now by injecting water, the engine will start itself. This is so fantastic. <laughs> if it works. Maybe I should do some magic. <laughs> this is crazy. And again, by controlling the amount of water that is inside the engine, we can control the magnitude of this vibration. And when you start the engine, you can actually close this hole and then it will operate for quite a long time. Later on, I will show you uh, the performance of the engine over maybe one hour in a separate video. All right, so that's all for this video. See you next time. Bye.